Have you ever wondered if your precious electronics are safe from the unpredictable beast that is electricity? We're talking about surges, sags, blackouts, or spikes. So today we're going to deep dive into the world of power protection. And we're talking about surge protectors, UPS, and power conditioners. So let's get to it. Let's start with the most common player, the surge protector. You basically have protection against sudden voltage spikes or transients as they're called. Now these can happen through faulty wiring, lightning strikes, or even cycling on and off major appliances. How do these work? Most surge protectors have something called an MOV. That's short for metal oxide varistor. Now what this does is it acts like a safety valve. Now, as soon as you have a voltage spike, it will divert the excess electricity into ground. And this offers basic filtering against line noise. So what should you use a surge protector for? Essentially, you should use surge protectors for appliances that you don't have a problem losing power. So something like maybe a printer, phone chargers, laptop chargers, or uh, an LED TV, or maybe a speaker, powered speaker that is. So basic home appliances that you can afford to lose power. And that's what they're for. Next up, we have UPS, uninterrupted power supply. Now, this is where things get serious. And UPS are of three types. The first one is standby, second is line interactive, and the third is online UPS. Now, the UPS is more than just a power backup. It gives you significant power conditioning features as well. Now, depending on the type of UPS you're using, it can give you protection against blackouts, that's total power loss, spikes, voltage spikes, sags, voltage drops, frequency variations, or line noise and filtering. Something what a power surge protector does, but it just offers better filtering over here. Now with the standby UPS, it switches over to battery as soon as you have a power loss. It offers you surge protection and basic filtering. So you should use this with non-critical electronics like a home PC. Line interactive UPS, as the name suggests, interacts with the line. So it is a step up from a standby UPS. If you have voltage fluctuations, so a line interactive UPS will correct it. It has better filtering capabilities than a standby UPS, but if the voltage drops too much, then it will switch over to its battery. Now, a line interactive UPS is good for gaming PCs, workstation PCs, expensive electronics like AVRs or OLED TVs and home entertainment systems. And the last one, we have online double conversion UPS. Now, these are top of the line UPS. What it basically does is it takes the incoming line, which is an AC, converts it into DC, feeds it into the battery, and then the battery from there converts it into AC and then feeds it into your electronic. Now, since you are completely cut off from the grid, whatever fluctuations there are, your electronics are completely protected over here. Now, obviously, online UPSs are expensive. So this basically gives you a perfect sine wave. No matter what happens, on the grid, your electronics, if they're connected to an online UPS, will always be safe. For a home setup, an online UPS is usually an overkill. Online UPSs are mostly used in servers where power loss can give significant losses to a business. So they should be used with electronics that are highly critical or sensitive. Now let's talk about the third type, which is the power conditioner. Now, power conditioner is quite different from the surge protector as well as a UPS. Now, this device is less about preventing or protecting your device against surges, but more about the quality of electricity that is being supplied to your system. A power conditioner can give you voltage regulation, which actively stabilizes voltage, preventing both over and under voltages. Harmonic distortions corrects distortions in AC waveform caused by modern electronics. EMI and RFI noise filtering eliminates electromagnetic and radio frequencies interference that can degrade performance, especially in audio and video equipment. And then transient voltage suppression. This offers robust surge protection, often superior to basic surge protectors. Now. All of these terms that have been described, if you don't know what they are, or if you don't use this kind of equipment, a power conditioner won't be necessary for your usage in most cases. So where is a power conditioner used? Now, it's mostly used in high-end audio gear, generally what audiophiles use. Now, this is crucial for eliminating background noise in the system, as well as improving the quality of what you're listening to. It's also used in sensitive medical equipment and precision lab 
equipment as well, recording studios and high-end workstations. So the next question you might have is, does a UPS have a power conditioner? Can I use only a UPS and not a power conditioner? The answer is a little tricky over here. So it depends on which kind of UPS you have. And UPSs do have some level of power conditioning. But basically what a power conditioner does in entirety that a UPS cannot do. It can do maybe 70 to 80 percent of the stuff of it, but uh, the rest 20, 30 percent of it is done by a power conditioner. You need that dedicated separate unit. So if you're using a standby UPS that offers you basic power conditioning, line interactive, it gets a little better. And with online double conversion UPS, which takes you off the grid, as I mentioned before, this gives you the best power conditioning. Now, if you're an audiophile or you have extremely sensitive lab equipment or medical equipment, then this might not cut it for you and you might have to go for a power conditioner. So now let's recap and give you very clear recommendations of what to use when. First, we have surge protectors. They give you protection against spikes, surges, sudden high voltages, that is. And they're best for TVs, non-critical home electronics, chargers, lamps, etc. They offer you budget-friendly basic protection, and that's good enough for these gadgets. UPS, they give you protection against blackouts, brownouts, overvolted, sag, surges, noise, frequency variations, and the best use for computers, network equipment, valuable electronics where data loss or sudden shutdown is unacceptable or consistent power is needed. Now, the gadgets that you can go for over here is a desktop PC, gaming PC, NAS, maybe a home server, modem, router, home theater system, AVR, projector, security system if you have, and similar gadgets. Now, for power conditioner. Power conditioner offers you protection against voltage fluctuation, harmonic distortion, EMI, RFI noise, enhanced surge protection, and focuses on clean and quality power. Now, they're best used for high-end audio or video equipment, sensitive lab equipment, professional recording gear, where pristine power quality directly impacts performance. Gadgets over here that need this is high-end AVRs, stereos, or DACs audiophile amplifiers, studio monitors, turntables, medical diagnostic equipment, or laboratory equipment. Now, understanding what your gadget needs and what these types of power protection devices or power quality devices can do for you is quite important so that you can protect every electronic that you've ever owned. And hopefully with this knowledge, you will be able to make a better choice. Let me know in the comment section below what you use to protect your electronic equipment.